What's good everyone, you dig, 4 eyes, 2 G's here, and today we're here to talk about the XXL freshman list, and shout out to everyone for showing me so much love on the 2016 video and wanting me to do another one, if you guys didn't watch that one, basically I just go through the artists on the list and discuss where they're at in their career and how they've gone since the XXL placement, pretty simple, these videos are done in 2 parts with 5 artists in each video, and I want you guys to comment down below the 2016 list or the 2017 list, which one do you prefer and why, personally I'm going with the 2016 list but let me know what you guys got and let's get right into it and firstly let's kick it off with made in tokyo and with tokyo it's an interesting discussion because although he doesn't have the same internet presence as people he came up with like a cardi and uzi or a yachty he has come out with a successful hit on nearly every project that's kept him buzzing and relevant obviously you are forgiven had the career change in uber everywhere and the explosive i want but also with Skateboard P on Thank You Mr. Tokyo and Ned Flanders from Sincerely Tokyo, the former of which is Platinum and the latter of which is Gold. And it's quite odd because you don't really see many people talk about Tokyo or bring his projects up in discussions, but I think that's more so to do with the fact that he isn't on a major label. So compared to other artists who have that full money machine behind them, of course his presence isn't going to be the same. There's no denying the fact that he hasn't had a song on the same level as Uber Everywhere, however not being on a major and still coming out with a hit on every project project is impressive and hard to do so today, so definitely big props and you can always guarantee on Tokyo to come through with a banger or two. And next we move on to Playboy Cardi. And although you guys do know I am a stan, when you do look at it objectively since 2017, Cardi has glowed the fuck up. The XXL list really came out at a perfect time for Cardi, as soon as Magnolia exploded, the floodgates were open, and from there, Woke Up Like This started to pop and people really started gravitating towards self-titled, and since then, Cardi's been out of here. Crucially, Cardi followed up very well with Dilit, which felt like it was even more well received than self-titled, and also had a hit with Shooter, which helped to keep Cardi relevant in that normie slash mainstream audience. Since Dilit, the internet cult around his music has seen exponential growth thanks to the thriving community of fan pages, content creators, and stands. And in the lead up to the elusive whole lot of red, there's no doubt that in terms of that core fan base, he has them on lock and they're waiting on it week by week. However, mainstream relevance is another question, and it'll be interesting to see how whole lot of red does commercially and whether it'll have a Magnolia slash shooter type hit, because I think this is a true determinant to see exactly how big Cardi's fanbase actually is. Sure, on the internet, his presence is everywhere and the Cardi community is in full force, but in terms of actual tangible unit numbers and sales, it remains to be seen how that translates and I'm curious to see myself. Alright, moving on from Cardi, we get to A Boogie, and Boogie is another artist that has glowed the fuck up since his XXL list. Like, seriously glowed the fuck up. Boogie took that female friendly R&B hip hopish lane that needed someone new and ran the fuck with it and all the power to him. Although the year before the XXL spot in 2016 was his breakout year with tracks like My Shit and Timeless, really 2017 was his establishing year in the mainstream. Drowning with Kodak Black really kicked the door fully down for Boogie and since then he's been non-stop with the hits. With well over 10 certified songs and 3 certified projects to his name in his short career, that feat deserves praise. I'm not going to sit here and say his projects are classics, his sound is revolutionary and act like it's anything but somewhat generic melodic r and trap, but that's not down playing it, the numbers speak for themselves, and as I said in my last video, countless r and artists have come and gone since their XXL placement, so sticking around for this long and growing still, you gotta give him props. And before we go on, a quick shout out from my Instagram, big shout outs goes to Levi Eric 1719 shout out to him for commenting on my IG posts, and appreciate everyone showing me love over there, if you guys haven't, do make sure to follow me on Instagram, at your dig, also reminding about my Cardi and Travis merch tees, they're fire and they're selling fast, so link in the description if you want to cop, also make sure to comment, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that good YouTube stuff, but let's keep going with the list and move on to PNB Rock. Now, PNB Rock is in a bit of a middle place. Place. He hasn't fallen off and he's done enough to keep his buzz and his name growing, but it's not like he's been really able to establish himself as a solo artist and really go on a crazy run like someone like Boogie has. Namely, because he's been on a bit of a dry spell and his last proper hit was in 2017. It's also important to mention that pretty much every song of his that has kept him relevant since his solo breakout track Selfish in 2016 has been bolstered with at least one huge name. 2017 hits from the Fast and Furious soundtrack Gang Up 
Sharp and Horses had Young Thug, 2 Chains, Wiz Khalifa on the former, and Kodak Black and A Boogie on the latter. And even in 2019 alone, his biggest songs have been with Skies, Triple X, Nicki Minaj, and he even somehow landed on Ed Sheeran's album alongside Chance the Rapper. However though, that's not downplaying his success too much because his recent album Trap Star turned Pop Star did 42k first week, so clearly he has fans. But still, I do think that largely comes from the names on it rather than himself being an established solo artist. And lastly to touch on in this video is Cap G. And I remember in my video covering this list back when it dropped, I felt pretty strongly that Cap G shouldn't have been on this list. And I know a lot of you guys felt the same way. And his career path since then pretty much sums up what we all all thought was going to happen. I can say that Cap G can make some good songs, but his music is just so cookie cutter generic trap that it makes me yawn. After his 2016 mini hit Girlfriend, he's pretty much gone ghost and because of the quality of his music, nobody really checked for him like that since. His 2017 and 18 tracks respectively, one with Uzi slash Gunner and another one with Cardi, helped to bolster him up, largely because of their fan bases checking out the songs. But yeah, I really don't see him coming back with any sort of real impact anytime soon to be honest and it's pretty much irrelevant right now. And that's all from me today guys, thanks a lot for watching. As I said, make sure to comment down below 2016 or 2017, which double XL list do you prefer? Also like, subscribe, turn on notifications and be on the lookout for part 2 coming soon. There are other videos of mine on screen right now as well, do make sure to check them out if you haven't.